Hey guys, Will here. So you've probably already seen our full review of the brand new Logitech Pro ecosystem for sim racing. So we took a deep dive into the wheelbase, the wheels, and of course the new load cell pedals. What we didn't cover in that video was the experience on console. So today we're gonna to be doing exactly that. We're gonna be looking at this from a couple of different angles, what the experience is like on both PlayStation and Xbox with this new hardware and how it compares to some of the other options that are available on the market. So let's get started. Now before we jump in and do some driving today, I do also need to clarify one error that we made in our original review video. So in the review video, I said that the base determined compatibility depending on which console you had. So if you had an Xbox base and you tried to use a PlayStation wheel, it wouldn't work, it would only work on a PC. And if you had a PlayStation base and you tried to use an Xbox wheel, it would also give you PC compatibility. Now the interesting thing was that we did actually test this when we made that review video and that was the experience that we had. But Logitech reached out and said that that actually was incorrect and I since did a a reflash of the same firmware package again and I'm experiencing something a little bit different. So I just wanted to explain once again exactly how compatibility works here between the different wheels and bases. So of course it doesn't really matter at the point in which we're making this video because if you buy the Xbox base you're getting an Xbox wheel and if you buy a PlayStation base you're getting a PlayStation wheel but later on when they release additional wheels this will become important. So I wanted to make sure you guys are 100% clear. So the way compatibility works is exactly the same as it is with the Fnatic ecosystem being that PlayStation compatibility comes from a security chip inside the base and Xbox compatibility comes from a security chip inside the wheel. So what that means in a practical sense is if you buy the Xbox version of this package and then you later on want to use it on a PlayStation, you're going to be out of luck because you don't have that PlayStation security chip inside the base. Whereas if you buy the PlayStation version and then you later on buy an Xbox compatible wheel, then you will actually have compatibility across all three platforms, which is great. So unfortunately it makes it a little bit complex at the time of launch because obviously if you want to have Xbox compatibility, you only have the option to buy the Xbox base with the Xbox wheel. You can't buy the Xbox wheel separately. But just do keep that in mind. If you intend later on to maybe want to play on a PlayStation, but you're playing on PC for now, you are better off getting the PlayStation version and then later on buying an Xbox compatible wheel if you wanted to move across to an Xbox. So I just wanted to make that 100% clear before we move on because it was an error in the original video. We have corrected it on our website, of course, and there is a pinned comment underneath the original video. And we have also since confirmed this 100% with Logitech as well. But anyway, let's jump in and do some driving. So we spent a number of days experimenting across a wide variety of different types of titles from arcade all the way through to proper sim racing titles like I said of course a Competizione, tested across the PlayStation 5 as well as the Xbox Series X. So what I'll do is to keep this as punchy as possible is just summarize my experience overall. If you do have any specific questions about specific games, let us know in the comments down below. We are happy to make some individual videos for various different titles, talking about settings and things like that as well if you guys want it. So starting from the beginning here, the biggest observation overall was that for any of the titles that don't support True Force, and there is only a handful of titles across both the PlayStation and the Xbox that do support True Force natively at this point in time. I'm not gonna list them all off here because that will change over time. Jump on their website, via the link down in the description below for the full list of compatible titles. But it's really important to understand that there is a difference between titles that support the wheelbase fundamentally and then titles that actually support the True Force API on top of that. And if you wanna understand exactly what we're talking about with True Force, then I'll put a link to the timestamp in the original review video where we talked about that in more detail as well so you guys can understand. But there is a big difference between just normal force feedback versus True Force enhanced force feedback if you want to call it that. So force feedback quality is about on par with what you would get from say a CSL DD or a GT DD Pro. We're dealing with 11 newton meters here as opposed to the five newton meters or eight newton meters that you get with the boost pack on the Fanatec CSL DD or GT DD Pro. Now there is of course the DD1 and DD2 which are both Xbox compatible and of course the PlayStation Podium Pack which is a effectively a DD1 which is also PlayStation compatible as well. But none of them have True Force and that is really where I think the big difference lies between this and those other ones. So it's not so much about the force feedback strength, it's about the fidelity and the amount of detail that you actually get through the wheel when you're driving. 
think. So in the titles where True Force isn't supported, I didn't find that the added strength over the CSLDD or GTDD Pro was particularly useful as the feedback is generally a lot more robotic feeling than it is on a PC. Now it's a difficult one to describe there because it certainly doesn't feel like a square wave or jerky or anything like that. It's still relatively smooth and refined as it's actually communicated through the wheelbase. But I think what's actually happening here is the majority of the titles, the sample rate is a lot lower. So what it's actually doing, and again, this is just my description of what I'm feeling. It's not necessarily a technical analysis, but it feels like what it's doing is interpolating that signal and then creating a more damp and smoother effect. So you don't get the jerkiness through the wheel, but the underpinning force feedback just isn't as granular or detailed as you get on a PC for those games that don't support true force. Now, the other thing that you have to consider there as well is that on a PC, see you do have the ability to fine tune a lot of those effects either in the game or depending on which wheelbase you're using you can fine tune there as well to dial things in exactly as you like them. Now even though we do have the settings menu on this wheel as we showed in our full review you are limited somewhat in the amount of adjustment that you can make there and when you're in a console environment where the games may or may not allow you to do a lot of fine tuning adjustment that is always going to be a limitation with those platforms too. So for me the best balance in those non true force titles is around sort of that six to eight newton meter mark I found above that it did just start to feel a little bit overpowering. Not a robotic sensation, but just an overly dampened sensation that was just too strong. So winding it down sort of dialed that back a little bit and made it feel a little bit more, I guess, authentic and realistic. But on the titles that do support True Force, and remember there's not all that many of them, check the website as I said before, it is an entirely different story. So across both the PlayStation and the Xbox platforms, the feedback has an added level of granularity and detail, which I've never experienced on a console before with any wheelbase. Gran Turismo 7 on PlayStation as well as ACC or Assetto Corsa Competizione on PlayStation and Xbox were both outstanding examples. There's just a huge amount of detail there and very close in fact to what I experienced using this wheelbase on a PC last week when we did the test, which actually genuinely surprised me. One thing that I did notice that was a little bit different on ACC was that the ripple strips or rumble strips don't quite have the same definition as they do on a PC. On a PC, I really felt the sensation of running up on those ripple strips, a lot of really, really granular high frequency detail, and that was lacking on both the consoles compared to the PC. But otherwise, road textures, the sensation of bumping into other cars, hitting walls, and things like that, the sensation of the car actually moving around was very good. It was just those finer details that were lacking on console compared to PC. Now, Gran Turismo 7 in particular gives you a really good sense of the weight and balance of the car through the steering wheel, which made it a lot more easy to catch slides and lift off oversteer, things like that. This was also present in GT Sport. However, the underpinning force feedback in GT Sport wasn't anywhere near as detailed as it was in GT7. So you do really get a good sensation when you lift off and the car starts to get sideways. You really feel that through the wheel. You can really sort of get in there and catch the, catch the car and it allows you to drive a lot closer to the edge than uh, than you may otherwise be able to do. So that was definitely one outstanding advantage of this particular wheelbase with True Force compared to the experience on the GTDD Pro previously. So that covers the more simulation focused titles. On the more Simcade titles like F122 and Dirt Rally 2, those do both support True Force on console. The experience there was very similar to what it is on a PC, not really a notable difference between them and definitely not as detailed as you get in some of those more simulation focused titles, but that's pretty much what you'd expect. So while the experience is very good on this wheelbase, I wouldn't go as far as to say that it is worth paying extra for something like this over the experience that you get with some of the other options that are available on the market. So if you focus primarily on those two titles, then maybe it isn't the right time to be upgrading to this guy. Now as for the pedals, the result is pretty much the same as what we experienced when we tested on the PC. There's really nothing more to add on top of what we covered in our dedicated pedal review. So I would definitely recommend watching that for all the details there. Remembering again that the G Pro pedals are the only compatible pedals with the G Pro wheelbase for consoles at this point in time. They are gonna be releasing an adapter, they tell us, but we don't have a whole lot of detail on when or exactly how that's gonna work at this point in time. Now just one other thing to keep in mind there as well, as you saw in the pedal review where we adjusted the minimum dead zone to avoid getting any brake input, 
if you're just resting your foot on the pedal. That isn't something that you can adjust on consoles in at least the titles that we tested. There may be an option in some other titles or they may add the option later on. So you will have to make sure that you don't get in the habit of resting your foot on the brake pedal. Being a sensitive load cell pedal, you will find that you're dragging your brakes without intending to do so. And that of course is gonna ruin a lot of races. So just be aware of that. But otherwise pedal experience is absolutely everything that I would expect it to be and among the better experiences available on console. Now another aspect which definitely shouldn't be understated is the ease of use. And in the case of the PS5, it was literally plug and play. The controls were automatically assigned in most of the titles and I was up and driving with literally zero effort. All I had to do was just adjust the true force strength and the overall force feedback strength to fine tune to my personal preference. Now Xbox wasn't quite as seamless, but again, I'm sure that's something that will improve over time, but it certainly wasn't complicated. I just had to be a little bit more aware of starting games with the right device so that the device was properly detected. And there are a couple of titles that took a couple of launches and relaunches to get working. I did notice that a set of Corsa Competizione for some reason was crashing out when I tried to record. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the deal was there. I don't know whether it's related to the wheelbase or not, but I thought it was worth just noting that one quickly for you guys. So to summarize now, I think what's really being highlighted here is that the experience using Logitech Pro Kit is largely dependent on the quality of the game's integration of TrueForce. On the titles that don't support TrueForce, very similar to what we get with the current Fnatic wheelbases. And don't forget, of course, that uh, Thrustmaster are gonna be releasing their direct drive wheelbase very soon as well. And I assume that that will also be console compatible, although I don't know for sure just yet. So if you're mostly playing on titles that do support TrueForce, especially Gran Turismo 7 on PlayStation, or ACC on PlayStation or Xbox, I think you're gonna be very impressed with what Logitech have achieved here. On other titles, there's not really a significant improvement, if any improvement at all, over what's on offer elsewhere at a lower price point with the CSLDD and GTDD Pro, remembering, of course, the strength difference. But as I said earlier, I did end up winding that strength down on this base anyway. Not a whole lot of compelling reason to buy one of these over a CSLDD or GTDD Pro. But of course, that will change over time as True Force integration is added to further titles and improved upon in some of the titles that we tested as well. So ultimately, the value proposition here boils down to what games you intend to play and whether or not you intend to expand into a PC setup for sim racing further on down the track. Regardless of how good the force feedback is, the sim racing experience on a console is and probably always will be limited, at least in the current generation of consoles. We don't have the option of game mods like we have with a set of Corsa, which is a huge selling point for a set of Corsa on PC, for example. We don't have the same abundance of choice when it comes to online racing and matchmaking services that have become so popular on PC sim racing titles, although there are a lot of great console based leagues out there and that's definitely something that I would recommend checking out if you are racing on a console. We just don't have the option of things like triple screens, motion cockpits, and just those little things, or maybe not so little things, depending on who you are, that make it a much more complete, I guess, experience on a PC. A little sketchy there on car tires still. So for what it is, I think the Logitech Pro does a fantastic job, but you do also need to consider Fanatec's expansive ecosystem with their range of compatible wheels. And of course, Thrustmaster's direct drive system is only just around the corner as well, and we're yet to see exactly what they have planned. So for now, I think if you want the best experience possible on console, this is probably it, but only for those selected titles that do support True Force. It's early days yet though, and I do very much look forward to seeing what happens into the future. So I really hope that today's video has helped you guys out. And if you do have any questions, definitely let us know down in the comments below so we can address those and do some more detailed videos diving into individual sim titles if you guys want to see it. And if you do decide you want to pick one of these up or any of the other gear that we've mentioned in today's video, the links down in the description below are an awesome way of helping support our work here at Booster Media at no additional cost to you. We really do appreciate your support there. But above all, thanks as always for watching guys and we'll see you again very soon. Bye.